Hi, welcome to our final presentation on transport through membranes. Uh, today we're focusing on osmosis and water potential. And the part of the specification we'd like to look at today is the movement of water across membranes by osmosis and the effects that solutions of different water potential can have on plant and animal cells. And we'll be defining water potential if we go through. Uh, practical investigations we'll consider in lessons. So osmosis, it's just a fancy kind of diffusion. Remember that diffusion is movement of molecules from where they are higher concentrated to lower concentrated down a concentration gradient. Yeah, we've learned about that already. So osmosis is just uh, diffusion referring specifically to water molecules. In other words, movement of water molecules from where there are more water molecules to less water molecules. Um, you often need to add in the idea of a partially permeable membrane into the definition. Um, where it gets confusing is where we start talking about, are we talking about water concentration? Are we talking about solute concentration? So often it's better to talk about what we call water potential. So uh, the definition you'll be expected to recall now is, Osmosis is the movement of water molecules from a region of higher water potential to a region of a lower water potential, in other words, down a water potential gradient across a partially permeable membrane. We'll explain water potential in a moment. Remember, though, you need to know the difference between solute, solvent, and solution. Solute is the solid that dissolves, like salt or sugar. Solvent is the liquid that does the dissolving. In this case, it's going to be water. Solution, mixture of solute and solvent. Yeah, so when the salt or sugar dissolves in water, it becomes a solution. Now, osmosis will continue to occur until you get what we call equilibrium. In other words, a balance between both sides where both sides are equally concentrated. Yeah, if it's moving from one side of a membrane to the other, water continues to move until both sides are e um, equally concentrated. At that point, water molecules are still moving, they're randomly moving, will continue to move, but we don't talk about there being any net gain or net osmosis. Yeah, but water molecules will still continue to move even if equilibrium or balance has been reached. Now, um, we need to think, make sure we are absolutely crystal clear on the difference between water concentration and solute concentration. A solution that has a high water concentration therefore must have a low solute concentration and vice versa if it's got a low water concentration it has a high solute concentration yeah, so we need to be clear on the difference between the two that's why it's often better to talk about water potential so water potential is how likely or the tendency of water molecules to move and the more some uh, solute there is dissolved in it the more water will try and move into it it's measured or denoted by a symbol, the Greek symbol psi, P-S-I, uh, that's this trident symbol here, uh, and it's measured in kilopascals or kPa, so the unit of measurement is kPa, but it's denoted by a symbol of psi. I always like to think of how to remember that, well psi, um, it looks like a trident or a fork, Neptune or Poseidon, they were there pictured, king of the sea, he has a giant fork in his hand. Yeah. Uh, the net movement of water molecules by osmosis is determined by differences in water potential. Yeah. Pure water has the highest possible water potential because it is all water, there is no solute dissolved, and therefore it is the one with the highest water potential, the highest potential to water to move out of it to something else which is uh, has solute dissolved in it. Uh, so pure water has a value of 0 kPa. Anything with a lower water potential has a negative value. So you can't have positive water potential values, or we're not going to think about those. Yeah, it's 0 kPa or a negative value. Yeah, and the lower the water potential, the more negative something becomes. Yeah, so it's better to say less negative and more negative than higher and lower. Yeah. We're thinking about which one is more negative and which one is less negative. It helps to think about it that way for movement. So water molecules move from a region of high water potential to a region of low water potential. Remember this will be down or with its concentration gradient and a passive process. No energy required because it's moving down its concentration gradient. Uh, let's just reset that. So here we've got two different um, water potentials 
this one is more negative this one is less negative so if we leave it for any length of time we reach a balance point where water molecules start to move uh, until you end up with both at an equal uh, sort of water potential yeah so the water molecules move through the holes and the gaps in the membrane remember membranes which are partially permeable have small holes in that allow water molecules to move through but not the solute molecules the solute molecules are too large to move through so water molecules will move through and continue to move through even when equilibrium is reached they will move at random and some of them will get through the holes in either direction but no, there's no net gain, it just stops at that point and doesn't increase or decrease. So um, when we think about solutes, the things that do the dissolving, uh, that get dissolved rather, uh, the solvent is the thing that does the dissolving, um, then um, water molecules tend to bind to solutes to break them up. Yeah, so if you've got a sodium chloride solution, for example, the water molecules will surround both the sodium uh, and the chloride molecules, break them apart, spread them out, um, and the water molecules get attracted to those because of their charges. Um, the water molecules will tend to bind to them, and it means that it's reducing the amount of water that's available to diffuse. So in other words, making more water move towards it because there's less water available for diffusion. Yeah, it's maintaining the concentration gradient. So let's think about some examples. We're going to think about plant cells. Uh, three new terms for you here, isotonic, hypertonic and hypertonic. Isotonic, same water potential. So both inside and outside have the same water potential, no net gain of water, water does not move in or out. Um, here's our diagrammatic representation of a plant cell. Cell wall, the purple area here. This is the vacuole, remember, uh, that's a membrane-bound line sub-sac. So this is a, a cell membrane. This would be the nucleus, and this would be the cytoplasm. If you put it in a hypertonic solution, notice what happens. The uh, cytoplasm pulls away from the cell membrane. That's because the water potential outside is lower than the inside, so water tends to move out. In other words, this is a very salty solution, so the water is trying to move out to make that uh, to diffuse towards the salt because it's continuing to move with its concentration gradient. The cytoplasm pulls away uh, from the cell wall and we call that plasmolysis because it's become plasmalized. The cytoplasm has pulled away. Yeah, so plasm, plasmolysis, plasmalized. If we think about the inverse case, the opposite case, where we put it in a much more watery solution, uh, the water potential outside is now higher, the water potential inside is lower, so water tends to move in, it will try and move in and it will start to fill up this vacuole. And it pushes against the cell wall. Remember, cell walls are made of cellulose. They're rigid and inflexible and they will tend to resist movement. So as water moves in, uh, it fills up the vacuole and keeps filling up the vacuole until it reaches a balance point of pressure. Yeah. So there's so much pressure inside that it resists the movement of water molecules coming in. Sometimes talked about as pressure potential, uh, but certainly you need to think about that it will eventually become a balancer between the pressure of water molecules trying to move in and the pressure of water molecules pushing against the cell wall. So it reaches a balance point and no longer water molecules move in, even though the concentrations may not have become equal. Yeah, we call that being turgid, so it gives plant cells often some support, gives them some shape. Uh, let's think about animal cells. Here we've got a red blood cell. Uh, there we go, let's try that. So um, our typical red blood cell, no nucleus. Again, uh, an isotonic, no net movement overall. Water molecules moving both in and out in equal directions. Uh, if we put in hypotonic, in other words, where the water potential is lower than the cytoplasm, salty solution around the outside, water moves out just like it did in plant cell. This time we're talking about it becoming crenated. Crenated means crumpled or crinkled. So, um, yeah, that sort of crinkly edge is crenation. Um, whereas, again, the opposite, if we keep pumping water into it because there's no cell wall, the cell bursts, it undergoes lysis. Uh, so the water potential outside the cell is higher, water keeps on entering the cell, but because there's no cell wall to resist, 
if actually births are becoming uh, lysis. You might talk about cytolysis or hemolysis. Cytolysis is it's just a, uh, an animal cell. Hemolysis is specific to blood cells. Both of these tend to be artificial solution, uh, situations. So you know, it, this wouldn't occur in your blood because your blood would never become that dilute uh, because your body has homeostatic mechanisms to control the water levels to, to stop it from getting that dilute. Yeah. So isotonic, same water potential. Hypotonic uh, around the outside means more salty and less water, whereas hypotonic, more watery, less salt. And Okay, our final summary slide here. Um, key terms in matching pairs. This is where we have net movement of water from this side to that side. So water is moving down the concentration gradient that way uh, from a dilute to a concentrated solution. Or you could talk about it from hypotonic to hypertonic. It will go from where there is a high water concentration to low water concentration. Or from a low solute to a high solute concentration. Or finally, and most ideally, from a high water potential to a low water potential. Yeah, all of these terms match are interchangeable. Yeah, in effect, uh, if you're talking about a dilute solution, it also has a high water potential. Whereas a concentrated solution, certainly in terms of water, yeah, is or this is this is where it gets confusing, yeah, because dilute solutions, um, it's got uh, lots of water and not much salt, whereas this is concentrated, it's got more salt and less water. So it's better to be thinking about either talking about high and low water concentrations, but better still to avoid it altogether, demonstrate your knowledge, and talk about high water potential versus low water potential. Okay, make sure you get your head around those key terms. Make sure you know what happens both to animal and plant cells. Happy learning.